Please note that this video has spoilers for the subject. Put off by how long this video is, don't worry, I tend to jam-pack my videos with as much content, as many details as I possibly can, and I try to talk pretty fast, so while the video is a bit on the long side, I don't repeat myself, and I get into a lot of details about the subject that, you know, pretty much anything that I feel I can comment on and that I think you might find interesting. White and the Huntsman Movie Thoughts I have a few questions that I feel... I just, I, I have to get this out there. So did Queen Raven and Princess Snow White basically share a lesbian kiss? I mean, okay, she was pretending to be William, but still, that was basically... I, I, okay, I guess she swings both ways. And that time when, yeah, I'm sorry, this is going to start out sexual, you know, just, yeah, if that's not, just, just turn off the video now then. But, yeah. When Raven says to Snow White, he didn't even have the strength to raise his sword, was she saying, yo, daddy was impotent on our wedding night? I just... I don't know, maybe maybe it's just my mind that's going weird places. It's a Charlie's Theron movie, and she's really hot, and naked, very naked. Y you can hardly blame me. I liked that when she was, you know, when Raven was very weak, we saw it as, you know, she basically looked anorexic. I like that it used that to sort of say, you know, that that it, that that was how it depicted she is, she is weakened, you know, because, okay, at that, at that point, at that stage, it is very much, you know, it's hard to not be, you know, repulsed by it, you know, you can see bone and everything. But, yeah, you know, in a lot of movies, a lot of, you know, the, the conventional image of beauty tends to be these extremely skinny women. You know, yeah. I quite liked that it, you know, that, that the, the beauty thing was supposed to be inner beauty that that was how, you know, she was stronger, that, uh, yeah. And Christmas Stewart really does look right for the role. It's, you know, I mean, I'm talking skin color and hair color. It, you know, I, honestly, I am one of the people who find her attractive, but, you know, obviously, Charles Theron is more attractive, but, uh, yeah, I, th I think it worked well with, you know, this thematic of, you know, a good heart is stronger than, yeah. Now, the... I liked how she was very, how, how Snow White was very consistently a, you know, good person who wanted to save people, although she does have a pretty terrible track record, at least early on. I mean, like, she doesn't save Greta, she doesn't save that that horse, you know, yeah, that, she didn't do that well, but anyway, I mean, I don't know, maybe our tanks should have just, you know, cheered up, and then she would have been able to get it back out of it, I don't know. Kind of torn on the troll portion. I, I get what they were going for. I definitely do. And overall, I like the she is giving back life to everything. She is making things heal. I could have punched Queen Raven and her people when they freaking shot arrows at the the deer thing. You know. And you know what? I can imagine some people would think that it looked silly. Not one person even giggled. You know, and it's not like... 
IMDH range, and the theater was packed, you know, so we're talking a bunch of young people, both genders, I didn't hear a single giggle during that entire sequence. And it's not that it was a quiet audience, you know, there was broad reactions, especially during the really funny parts, like the, the like when the dwarfs open the gate with, you know, several of them hold, you know, pulling down the, the road thing, that was, you know, it was funny and it got left. Actually, I think the dwarves were so funny in the movie that there at the end, they actually got a laugh even though they weren't actually doing anything funny. You know, right before they say, long live the queen, I heard several laughs. It was just, I think it was like that kind of anticipatory, they were, I don't know if that's proper conjugation of that. Anyway, yeah, it, it was just an anticipation of your know, they're going to do so, or say something funny. I like the dance, you know, Gus and the, and obviously he's the one who's got to die, you know, the, the one that she, yeah, kind of got close to, and yeah, he was totally caught in the field with that, now we hug, you know, there was like, a, there was a woman right next to me who said, ah, yeah, because he's the right height for, yeah, obviously, but yeah, <laughs> way back when I brought up I like the overall thing of her bringing back life to the forest, bringing back hope. She is a good, clean presence, she is fair, she is good of heart. The queen is an evil presence, you know, I get probably because she's bitter. You know, she, yeah, she, she's bitter on account of, I also thought maybe the reason why he wasn't terribly affected from the dark force of the huntsman he didn't have a name, did he? The Huntsman. He was just the Huntsman. Hey, Huntsman. No, wait. No, he had a name. Anyway. Never mind. I think it was because he wasn't afraid of dying. She was, and most people are, so most people who walked into the dark forest... By the way, after a while, they didn't seem that bothered by it, did it? Was it just that... Basically, the whole thing with, you know, Huntsman, you have to find the, uh, you know, Princess Snow White. I was kind of just so, you know, he could get there so that he could help her out. Because, you know, after he joins her, there isn't that much trouble by, you know, the Queen's various men to find, I don't know, maybe he just gave really good instructions on how to maneuver around the Dark Forest. Anyway. I don't know how I feel about the troll, honestly. It, it just seemed maybe a little too cutesy. Didn't mind the elves, honestly, but yeah. And the that, that horrible sound right after the, the deer got shot. I'm thinking that was like the fairies again, but now it was a wail of pain or of sadness. You know, yeah, I know, I'm, I'm totally deep. You know, you should come to my beat poetry night. And I just, I thought it was perfect, honestly. I want to talk a little bit about the structure. There are some things in this movie where it basically follows the Hollywood structure, you know. There, there are the cliches. The moment the huntsman teaches her something, you know, because he's impressed with her. There's some good quality about her, so he decides to share some of his wisdom. Hmm, I wonder if this wisdom will come in handy later in the movie. Hmm, perhaps she will even use this one attack she's learned to defeat the one enemy she actually, you know, fights directly, the villain. Yeah, you know, and like I said before, obviously Gus is the one. I think he's actually the one dwarf who dies, you know. Yeah, pretty sure. By the way, I loved how the dwarfs you know, went into the castle, freaking commando style, you know, the video game series, just sneaking behind and you're, okay, we gotta take out this one guy, you know, jump on the legs, pull him down, and just, I loved it, you know, and, and the walking next to the horse, it was hilarious and awesome all at the same time. Now, the... I don't know, part of me feels like there was, there was a period where we didn't see the Queen. Basically, from between, you know, 
Yeah, basically soon after, you know, we, we see her sitting there right before she asks for the heart of Snow White. You know, she's sitting there with those, you know, very non-flattering male extensions from the Middle Ages and, you know, eating, I don't know, animal guts, something. And, you know, yeah, Snow White escapes and she, you know, she shouts at her brother. And then for a while we don't really see her. I think, yeah, then, then we see her weakened. And then, yeah, and then, I don't know, half hour maybe passes without us seeing her. And I just, early on I, I thought that it was like she was really going to be weakened if she didn't get the Heart of Snow White, really, excuse me, really soon. But then it kind of didn't. You know, it seemed like a while past. And then, you know, the, I can kind of deal with that there at the end. She's really powerful because she has just soul sucked all those, you know, people around. That was also a nicely effective, you know, in, in just this one shot we see, ah, she's, you know, taken the youth and power of all these people. So, yeah, I can kind of buy that. And they were pretty cool, those glass shard fighter creatures that she sent at the, you know. I think it was, it was very nice of the Huntsman William to bring her some cannon fodder. Because really, what would she have done if, you know, there were only those two? She, she really wouldn't have gotten to show off how deadly the, these glass creatures were. You know, with just, well, the, the Huntsman there to, you know. Constantly dodge, dodge, d d dodge. The I was slightly unclear on, am slightly unclear on why did the kiss work? You know, at first, immediately you have the William kiss, which. I personally just think he just wants to get a little action before it's technically pedophilia. You know, there were probably laws against that even back then. But then, you know, she doesn't wake up from that. And Huntsman, you know, is like... And it, I love that scene because it actually... It could so easily be horrible. That scene could be just him whining. And you would mentally add, how could this happen to me as the background music? But no, it's a strong scene. He is, he is lamenting that he's, he wasn't strong enough to save him. And then you know, he goes up and kisses her. And then she wakes up. And I can't quite figure out exactly what is... I don't know. Is it that she has inspired him to try to be better? And knowing that, you know, like... Heart again, you know, brings her back to life because I don't know. I felt like the the thing about how, you know, I don't even remember his name, but Raven's brother having been the one who killed Huntsman's wife, and then him getting you know payback for that. I felt that like that was a little, I don't know, under established. You know, it, it just didn't... I, I don't mind payback stories. I just felt like it is suddenly, you know, Oh, by the way, I killed your wife. You killed my wife. I killed your wife. You must die. I'm, I'm dead. It's just, yeah, okay. You know, he just finds out five minutes before. We didn't even really know. I don't know, it's not even like he was like this mass murdering psychopath or this you know, serial rapist or something. It came out of nowhere. And, yeah. I don't know, it is maybe like halfway through the script writing process they realized, oh by the way, maybe we should like give him some resolution to the whole dead wife thing and you know make it make a meaningful death out of the Raven Brother character and then they added that in and forgot to drop hints earlier on. I don't know. Another scene that I really liked. Personally, I thought pretty much every time someone did a big dramatic speech in this movie, it freaking worked. I was, I was, 
hanging on their every word. It's just Kristen Stewart giving a big dramatic speech. I I would not think that I would utter those words in a positive tone. And again, remember, I like Kristen Stewart. I just I didn't think that she had that kind of gravitas and passion to her. You know. I don't know, I, I think it might be her, her age. She, I, I don't maybe think that she quite has the life experience to really give a speech like that, but she nailed it. And actually, at first, I thought that she, okay, she's, you know, oh crap, Snow White's like hallucinating. She just, she just woke up from, you know, basically being dead. Well, basically being dead. Because at first, she's like, iron melts, but it writhes. Flame. Sparks! And I'm like, oh, stop talking. So, somebody, you know, grab her, ex make excuses to the crowd, and pull her, you know, it's, it's just, yeah. Anyway, yeah, great scene. <laughs> and I, I quite like this whole section of the film with the scarred women where, you know, the, the, she, she gets her power from her beauty and she can't use them because they've scarred themselves and that was a choice they made, that was a sacrifice they made so that they could raise their women, their, their children peacefully and the men have all gone on to fight, you know. Yeah, I just thought, I, in general, I felt like the movie handled the whole thing with you know, inner beauty and outer beauty quite well. It was pretty Robin Hood when William is like on top of the coach and you know firing arrows at the you know that group. That by the way, where did that arrow go? Did he dodge the arrow when the you know he's standing like big dramatic stand? I don't know how he knew that they were gonna ride. It exactly past that point, you know, maybe, maybe he's been like standing there. It would have been slightly funny if he had accidentally stood in the wrong place and they had like taken a shortcut maybe and went around and then he'd be like, no wait, wait for me, I have a question. But anyway, yeah, he's like, yo, do you need a bowman? We already have a bowman, kill him. And he fires now, where did that arrow go? Did he like just dodge it? I think he makes like a slight movement, but yeah. And then he fires two arrows because if you're not killing your enemy with two, you know, shots, then what good are you, really? And then, you know, okay, now they need a bowman, and yeah. I thought that pretty much every time a sort of peace was broken by an attack by the Queen's forces, I thought it really worked. I, I really felt her evil, dark, destructive presence in this world, in, in the world that the film creates. You know, I thought that was very substantial. You could really feel it. You know, every time she gets to a place, death and destruction good, just follows in her wake, in, in, in the wake of her men. And yeah, you know, with the light, and for, for a second there, you, you catch yourself to think, ah, oh, it's like sunlight. And then you think, that's not sunlight. That's not sunlight! Get away from there! You know, it's just, yeah. And again, like I said, the, the, the deer with the horns thing, and the... I suppose that pretty well covers it. Yeah, but... Uh, fantastic film. If there's anything that I didn't bring up here that, you know, you want to discuss, discuss. Please rate and comment, and hey, if you like this video, that subscribe button's just waiting for you to click it.